Hello and welcome to the Ice Guys, brought to you by the National Hockey Now Network. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by National Hockey Now. Thursday, December the 1st, the month of Christmas has arrived. Final month of 2022. Just another in that several years that just flies by before you can even blink. Uh, that's what it feels like uh, every single year when we end up in December like this. feels like where the hell did the year go? Another year flying by fast. Another NHL season flying by fast. Pretty crazy that it's already been almost two months uh, into the regular season, but here we are, and here we are on a Thursday with another huge NHL card uh, to break down, a whopping 11 games on the slate. Briefly, though, quickly last night, congratulations, Mitch Marner, 18-game uh, point streak for the Leafs. Yeah, you could say he got it in a cheapie. It was only an empty net goal, but it counts. Uh, they'll look back on it and say, hey, it's still a point on the board uh, to keep that streak alive and tie Daryl Sittler and Eddie Olchek for the uh, – Franchise record in consecutive game point streaks at 18, and he will look to be the lone stand, last man standing, if you will, with the, uh, standing alone as the franchise leader uh, in consecutive uh, game point streaks with 19. He'll have that opportunity to get the record Saturday uh, night against the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. So uh, very, very uh, great job by Marner. He's been excellent here. Uh, throughout this run so congrats to him he'll have a chance to break the record Saturday and shout out to Eddie O I, I retweeted the picture there giving the thumbs up in the uh, TNT booth when he was working the Oilers and Blackhawks game last night uh, acknowledging the feat accomplished by Eddie Olch uh, by Mitch Marner of course tying Edzo and of course Sittler for that uh, consecutive game point streak mark uh, the Leafs get a 3-1 win against San Jose a wild one with Buffalo and Detroit uh, Detroit Comes back from a 4-1 deficit. It was Buffalo going to blow a lead for the second straight game. They did it against Tampa the other night, but they rescued themselves with the shootout victory uh, over the uh, Detroit Red Wings uh, in that game last night. The New York Rangers finally get off the schneid. Very, very solid road effort, honestly, from them. You know, good, intense defensive play. Uh, you know, they, they helped out Halak, who was one of his better games this year. You could tell that was a sense of urgency setting in for the Rangers last night. They get the job done. And Edmonton, I'll tell you what, the game was probably closer, uh, not as close as the final score indicated, but uh, Edmonton had a couple breakdowns, but Edmonton was dominating early. Uh, actually, it was a good first period and a half, I would say, out of Soderblom, because it could have been a lot worse uh, if not for him in the uh, early going. But Edmonton gets the 5-4 win to cash the uh, – Edmonton in regulation bet. So just wanted to hit those games briefly uh, before we get into today's card, which we will now do because it is a huge yeah. Thursday slate. So we will begin with Vegas taking on Pittsburgh. We've got Pittsburgh minus 115 home favorites, six and a half the total uh, in this game. Uh, the Penguins, we know, uh, certainly not playing great at the moment. Uh, they've had some opportunities to win games and have not been able, you know, to get the job done. The Toronto game was not a great performance. They uh, took on Carolina the other night, could not hold a lead, lose 3-2 uh, in overtime uh, to the Carolina Hurricanes in that game. Uh, and now, of course, this is on the heels of yesterday's very unsettling news about the uh, status of Chris Letang, who suffered a second stroke and will miss uh, an unspecified uh, indefinite period of time uh, for the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. And yeah, you can say what you want about how maybe this is not, you know, Chris Letang and you know, his prime of, say, 5 to 10, 15 years ago. But still, you're ta talking about taking out a player that plays still in all situations, plays a heavy amount of minutes uh, on the blue line for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and you're going to have to replace that. I mean, the guy still plays 22 to 23 minutes a night on average, and there's some nights he's even upwards as high as 25. He played 28 in a game against Washington just recently. I mean, you got to fill those minutes now. Uh, if you're the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins uh, moving forward on that blue line, they'll have to do it by committee. Dumoulin, Petrie, Pedersen, Ruda, Ruedel. Looks like Pierre Olivier Joseph is probably going to be someone that's going to draw in uh, to the uh, lineup now more often here with uh, the absence of Latang. So a uh, definite shakeup on the uh, blue line right now for the uh, Penguins. The Vegas Golden Knights, uh, I'll tell you what, the Columbus game was frustrating for me because I used them with the uh, puck line as the best bet on the show that day. Uh, they did get off to a strong start, 2-0 in the first period, but 
Columbus ties it up, and Vegas has to go to a shootout before uh, getting the job done against the Blue Jackets 3-2 the other night. It was another good performance from Tarasov, so keep an eye on this kid. You know, he stole the game against Florida for the Jackets, and he played pretty well and did everything he could to keep Columbus in that game because Vegas was pretty much controlling the play for most of the game, but still required a shootout uh, to get past the Jackets in that game. You know, I'm going to go with Vegas here at even money. They're 10-2 and two on the road. Pittsburgh really having a tough time at the moment. Uh, I think it's just right now uh, a cheaper price to back uh, the superior team. And again, don't be fooled by the 3-2 final score. Like I said, I thought Vegas played a really good road game. If not for Dan, Daniil Tarasov and Net, they probably could have scored four, five, six goals, not just the th- uh, the two that they ended up getting uh, before winning uh, in the shootout the other night. So I like Vegas here a little bit around an even money price, minus 105 in this one. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Golden Knights, Penguins. You know, this is a, a bit of an interesting matchup, and I like this one live over. Uh, definitely going to be an in-game play for me because you look at Vegas, they're 8-4 and four, uh, on the road with uh, the overs this year. Pittsburgh has trended under lately, three of the last four at home. Uh, and like I said, with the Latang injury, I think it's a bigger deal because of the fact that it's a significant. This is different. This is not his usual injury, you know, something with his leg or his hamstring or groin or wherever that's taking him out of the lineup. You know, him having a stroke, this is a real serious thing. He's out indefinitely. We don't know the status of, of his career and so forth. So with that being said, and, and I think Chris Otto kind of alluded to in the chat, you know, the, the locker room might really try to band together. And, and and gird up for a good game, kind of a win one for the Gipper kind of mentality. Yeah, Keep in mind, like true. Yeah. you know, they talked about at the beginning of the year with him and, and Crosby and, and Malkin. They've played together 17 years. There has been no trio in, in any of the four major North American sports to be around that long together. So that's a lot of cohesiveness. So when you have the leaders of the locker room, essentially, and one of those guys go out of the lineup, that that's a, a pretty big thing. And then conversely, because he's a guy who was so often injured for many years, we talked about this all the time. You can't overreact to you know Crosby or Latang being out because they've had to make you know changes around without those players. That's why I wasn't really worried. I saw him not in the lineup on Tuesday. Of course, we didn't know at the time what had had happened, but I wasn't worried about it because okay, well Chris Latang's out. They. have you know, made well with the. They've had to use a seventh defenseman quite often because he has had so many injuries throughout his career. So I'm not too worried about it on that end. But however, in having shifts with your defense, you tend to see goals being allowed. Uh, Vegas, like I said, has been getting their offense rolling, and, and Pittsburgh has the firepower to trade back and forth with a, a team like Vegas if they want to get into a boat race. So I'm going to wait for this number to drop down to five and a half and uh, shoot for the over uh, in game tonight. All right, looking by the in game over here for Alex with Vegas and Pittsburgh tonight. Uh, so again, uh, we'll keep. Uh, by the way, it looks like uh, Alex Petrangelo will be out. I think again for the uh, Golden Knights, personal issues. He missed the game on against Columbus because of that, so he'll be out once again. So they have their own key cog on the blue line missing uh, as well. Uh, that means you're probably going to see more ice time collectively from you know the, the guys that are probably going to get more ice time: Martinez, uh, Theodore McNabb, Ben Hutton. You know, guys like that are really going to. And Ben Hutton, it's isn't it a luxury when you can put someone like that in? Uh, to your uh, blue line. Uh, this is a guy that's played a lot of NHL hockey in the past. Uh, it's not going to be, I think, over uh, over his head to get back into the lineup. So uh, definitely, I think uh, it, that is the one thing that could help Pittsburgh here, the emotional element of go- seeing what's going on with uh, Latang. Does it bring a uh, real strong effort to the table tonight uh, when they take on the Vegas Golden Knights? That remains the ultimate question. But to me, it just looks like, you know, you've got this Vegas team that's just much the better of it right now. That's been a road machine, 10 and 2 this year, even money, price I just didn't want to resist. All right, next up, uh, we've got, and by the way, I might sprinkle a little bit on a Phil Kessel goal prop tonight, facing his old team, facing the Penguins. I know it's not, he's not the offensive dynamo he once was. He's not scoring the goals he once did, but this could be one of those nights where he's able to make an, an impact here for the Golden Knights. All right, Colorado, Buffalo. We've got Colorado minus 180 road favorites, six and a half the total uh, in this game. Yeah, I'm probably going to do what I did with Edmonton last night here in this game, a Colorado first period puck line and a Colorado uh, in regulation, I think I, I just don't want to. I don't want to get in the Colorado's way tonight. This is a defending Stanley Cup champion that probably had their ego wounded a little bit to not only lose the way they did to the Jets and get dominated in that game, but get shut out. I mean, when do you see the Colorado Avalanche not score a goal uh, in a game? I'm sure that does not sit well with McKinnon, Rantanen, any of those guys. Uh, McCarr, uh, nobody's happy with 
what they did against Winnipeg the other night. Uh, you know, so we'll see if they can uh, bounce back, which they did obviously when they lost to Vancouver, bounce back the very next game, beat Dallas by a score uh, of four to one. They lost to St. Louis three, two November 14th, bounce back the next game and they beat uh, Carolina. So we know this team off a of loss is not always something you want to be going against in a spot like this. Plus you've got the rest advantage. Uh, they've haven't played obviously since uh, the uh, game on, uh, and that game was Tuesday night against Winnipeg. So, and meanwhile, you got the Sabres rolling back to Buffalo, uh, second night of back-to-back -back games after a survival against the Detroit Red Wings last night, where they had a four-to-one uh, victory or four-to-one lead, I should say. Detroit comes all the way back, ties it up with three goals in the third period, and Buffalo needing a shootout uh, to get the uh, five-four uh, victory over the Detroit Red Wings last night. I mean, I'm going to also roll right back to the over in this game as well. I mean, it just continues to be the the, the uh, dominant theme right now, Alex, with the Sabres, is that they're playing one high-scoring affair after another for the most part, save from that New Jersey game where it was one of those nights where uh, the goaltending for uh, both teams that night was pretty good. There were a total of 78 shots on goal in that game. It probably should have equated to more than just four goals in that Sabres-Devils game. That's the only Buffalo game that has stayed under the total uh, in their last six games. They are 5-1 and one to the over in their last six games. 5-2, 7-2, 6-2, 6-5, 5-4 -5 final scores uh, in a bunch of those games. So I'm going to go with the over as well, plus a split bet, a half-and-half half Colorado first period puck line and Colorado in regulation. Uh, here against the uh, Buffalo Sabres. Uh, Alex, how about you, Colorado Buffalo? Yeah, I would definitely only look over here with this. I mean, like I said, Buffalo, we saw what they did with, with Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay's offense has, you know, hasn't been the high, you know, speed offense we've seen from recent years. They've slowly but surely getting their offense together. We know what Colorado can do, and especially coming off of a shutout as well. Uh, I think they're going to be, uh, you know, guns blazing for sure on the offensive front. So this should be a real fun back and forth one. Even with a six and a half, uh, I definitely would look over here. Oh, like in the over here, six and a half with the abs and the uh, Sabres. Uh, by the way, I still like, you know, in terms of the goal props here tonight for this game, I mentioned that Cogliano's up to the second line, O'Connor second line, even Comfer on the second, anybody on the second and the third line, they're tremendously undervalued right now. And that new look third line with Galchenyuk, new hook and foodie, you know, obviously, I took a lot of these props the other night against Winnipeg, and you know, it's obviously you're in trouble when you, the team doesn't score a single goal. But you would think against this Buffalo team right now, which is giving up goals lately, this is a good night to sprinkle once again on all of those players I mentioned. They're all undervalued. You can get them plus four hundred or greater uh, in a lot of in a lot of books right now to score a goal. Those second, third liners I mentioned for the Avalanche tonight for Buffalo. Jack Quinn is starting to get it rolling a bit for them. Dylan Cousins had a great night last night. I've been waiting for him to get going offensively because we know Thompson, Skinner, and Tuck are guys that you can usually rely on for Buffalo. They're the catalysts, but I kind of expected this to be a breakout season for Cousins. Not so much lately. He's been quiet, but came to life last night. Maybe now's the time to you know, expect maybe a little hot streak here from Dylan Cousins for the Sabres as well. So definitely a good prop game here when it comes to Colorado and Buffalo tonight. All right, Tampa Bay, Philadelphia. Tampa Bay minus 220. Road favorites, six the total uh, in this game. I would take Philly before Tampa, but honestly, in this game, plus 190. I mean, I like the angle. You know what it is. I've talked about this. The long losing streak is snapped, and sometimes after that, you get a little positive momentum, a little confidence pep in your step, you're a little more enthusiastic, coming to the rink, going to practice, and that might be the case for the Flyers. And keep in mind, too, during this losing streak, this has not been a losing streak where Philadelphia has been embarrassed. Philadelphia has been humiliated game after game after game. That has not been the case during this Flyers losing streak. This is a team that has lost a lot of tough games, a lot of close games. They've not been, you know, lit up on a nightly basis. They've just found a way to lose. You know, it's not like they've been, uh, way inferior in a lot of these head-to-head -head matchups that they've lost. You know, a lot of them have been close. Three of them were in overtime or a shootout during this recent losing streak for the Flyers. So beating the Islanders 3-1 uh, the other night, we'll see if they can keep it rolling here. You've got uh, the Flyers at home, Carter Hart confirmed in net, and that's significant because, as we've said for years, Carter Hart's a better goaltender, it seems, on home ice compared to on the road. So that's something to factor in. The one thing that might keep me off the Flyers' side, even though I lean to taking a shot with the home underdog here, is Tampa Bay off the loss uh, the other night. 
that they suffered against the uh, Boston Bruins 3-1. to one. Uh, That's a team that a lot of times you don't want to be going against them when they lost the previous game. So that could be uh, something that is enough to t- temper my enthusiasm here on Philly. But still, you're not laying a bargain with Tampa. And I like that that theory of the team that's on a bad losing streak, snapping that losing streak, and then getting immediately back in the saddle again and winning. That's what happened with Ottawa. You know, if you'll remember, it's happened a bunch of times this year uh, with teams when they snap a long losing streak, they uh, sometimes win two in a row. Now, this is obviously not one of the better teams in the NHL. You know, this is more of a leap of faith when you're talking about this angle working with a team like the Philadelphia Flyers. But it's just, in my opinion, you ask me, would I rather take Philly plus 190 or Tampa Bay in any fashion, regulation, puck line? I would honestly rather go Philly uh, in this game, but I don't know if I will. What do you think here, Alex, Tampa Philly? Yeah, I, I totally understand that uh, looking at Nick said Flyers, you know, it could, you know, continue the, the positive momentum forward. And, and they beat Tampa players. earlier this year down in Tampa. Right. Yeah, me too. They did. And, but like you said, but the fact Tampa coming off of a tough loss, and the fact, like you said, they, they just beat, you know, did beat them earlier. So this, the, the, the you know, storylines kind of uh, go against one another. I don't want anything to do with the side. I like the total here. First period over one and a half, only laying thirty. Flyers have cashed six straight in the first period overs. Uh, we don't get to see that often from them. And you look with Tampa, seven and four, the last 11. Uh, I think this is way too low of a, of a number. We're getting a one and a half. Uh, I know the first period overs have not worked out for me in the last couple of weeks, but I think this was a, a good spot. Like I said, with Philly keeping uh, that positive momentum going, Tampa trying to get their offense rolling again and, and want to get the bad taste out of mouth from that loss uh, against Buffalo, I think this might be a, a really dynamite uh, opening 20 minutes. There we go. So the first period over here for uh, Alex with Lightning and Flyers. couple props. Look, even for Philadelphia, Kevin Hayes has really been the one – constant here lately for the uh, Flyers he's got uh, 12 points in the last 10 games six goals six assists he's actually leading the team in goals with eight how about that team leader in goals has eight so tells you how much they've struggled to score as a team Uh, but Kevin A's might be worth a look Scott Lawton just came back from injury might be worth a look Cam Atkinson might actually make his season debut we've been waiting for Cam Atkinson who has connection to Tortorella from their time in Columbus together Uh, Cam Atkinson might finally be ready to make his season debut for the Flyers, but they're waiting until right before puck drop. It's probably going to be one of those deals where he's going to go out on the ice before uh, the game, the the pregame skate 30 minutes before the game, and that's when we're going to find out if Cam Atkinson uh, is a go tonight for the Flyers. And to be honest, they need him because, you know, that's a guy that's capable of 20, 30 goals uh, for you. So a big offensive piece might be returning tonight for the Flyers. As far as Tampa goes, uh, definitely I've talked about how right lately Stamkos and Point have been getting it done for them. Uh, Brandon uh, Brandon Hagel as well, since uh, moving up to the top line, has been a very effective, productive uh, player for the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. I think those are all uh, pr- prop possibilities you'd want to consider here if you're going to take some Lightning players uh, to find the back of the net in this game tonight. All right, Nashville, New Jersey. We've got New Jersey minus 200 home favorites, six the total uh, in this game. Uh, I just kind of like the Edmonton game last night. In fact, I think I used the words, I'm not going to overthink it. That's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to overthink it. Uh, New Jersey in regulation for me. Uh, This team is just uh, terrific. I sure as hell like this team a lot more than uh, Nashville here. Uh, By the way, the interesting angle, John Hines facing, of course, his old uh, team, uh, former head coach of the Devils, and now, of course, head coach of the uh, Nashville Predators. Not a coach that I think is one. He's not uh, Scotty Bowman reincarnate. He's not Jacques Demers reincarnate. Uh, this guy, we've said that uh, a million times. He's not uh, the second coming of uh, uh, Al Arbor or any of those great coaches you can remember from back in the day. That's just, he's not nowhere near that level. We know that. But, uh, you know, maybe there's a little something from a Nashville standpoint where, you know, uh, they want to win extra big for or extra important you know you want to win a little bit more because your coach is going back to face his old team but i don't know they're just to me nashville's just way too erratic when you barely beat anaheim at home two to one it's not really doing much to impress me when you look at it uh two to one overtime win against the ducks they lose three nothing a shutout to by the detroit red wings they escape and i mean escape with a four three home win against arizona in a shootout a lot of their games have been man they the the, the Predators are three and three, uh, four and three in their last uh, seven games. And, and when you're five and th- no, I should say five and two uh, in their last seven games, makes you think they're playing good hockey, right? But you look at these seven games, 
squeaked by the struggling Rangers, squeaked by Minnesota, which could have coin flip game could have went either way. The five four against the Islanders again could have went either way. Lose to uh, Tampa in overtime, lose to Arizona in a shootout, shut out by uh, Detroit three nothing, and then lose in overtime. Uh, or beat Anaheim, I should say, in overtime 2-1. to one. They played a lot of close games. I guess that would be the one concern about regulation is they'll drag New Jersey into a tight one-goal game. Maybe it goes to overtime, but I just think New Jersey's at a totally different level right now, totally different level of speed, too. I've seen Nashville play a bunch. They're not littered with high-end speed uh, on this uh, in this lineup, and New Jersey might be able to hurt them in that regard. Uh, obviously, this team has just been remarkable. The only loss was that game against Toronto, uh, that snapped the uh, big winning streak. And all they've done since then is get right back on the beam and win three straight against Buffalo, Washington, and the New York Rangers uh, in their uh, last game. And by the way, for New Jersey here as well, nice little situation where they've got two days off. You know, they've got a little time to get practice in, you know, heal up, rest, be re refreshed, re-energized, if you will, for this game tonight. So, yeah, we're keeping it simple. Devil's better team. Devil's in regulation for me. Uh, Alex, uh, Predators, Devil's. Mm, slight, not so fast, my friend. I'm looking at the history between these two teams, right? And you mentioned about John Hines for, for facing his old team. Nashville's been a wagon against New Jersey. Eight and one the last nine. That's true. Yeah. Six straight in New yep. Jersey. But the thing that kind of worries me even more, I, I like New Jersey in the spot. I think New Jersey can win. But I don't know about regulation. Four of the last seven meetings have gone to overtime or a shootout. I've seen three of the last four Nashville games go to, to overtime or a shootout. These are two teams that are playing kind of tight. New Jersey should win this one. I like them. I already took them laying uh, the puck line in the first period at plus 130, well, plus 135. I thought that was a, a, a good enough number. I think they could jump out to the lead. But I think Nashville might be able to kind of battle back, keep this one kind of close. I'm looking at the draw, and I see it as high as plus 370 uh, at one place. So anywhere in the 360, 370 range, I'd take a small shot here with uh, Preds Devils going to OT. Yeah, that's fair. There's no doubt the, the the series history is uh definitely all Nashville, but definitely this is the best uh, Nashville team of that bunch. There's uh, that's the that's the difference. It's going to be now Nashville is going to play New Jersey for the first time since New Jersey's become pound yeah, themselves, if you team. will, yeah. uh, with this uh, great uh, team that they've got going right now. And uh, like I, I've said repeatedly, when it comes to the New Jersey Devils. Uh, right now, you know what? You can go so many different ways, right, uh, with this. John Marino, by the way, is day-to-day, -day, and that's unfortunate for the Devils. Uh, he's been playing pretty well on the back end uh, for uh, New Jersey, so uh, keep an eye on his status for this uh, game tonight. Nate Bastion as well. And keep in mind, they haven't even had Andre Pallott forever. You know, he, he got injured very early in the season. Uh, Andre Pallott, one of their big free agent acquisitions from Tampa Bay in the offseason. And um, no, he and they've still been able to uh, just keep it going. Uh, Jack Hughes has been terrific. Uh, what's he got? He's got 23 of his last 26 points in the last 17 games. He's got his 12th goal the other night, five goals in the last three games. But the one guy that's the hottest of all right now is Sharon Govich. And Cheshire Cat's onto that in the chat. It's absolutely true. He has five goals, three assists in the last seven games. For the uh, New Jersey Devils, he's absolutely going to be a prop to bet for me tonight uh, in this game. Uh, I keep saying one of these nights, you know, that fourth line is going to strike because they're capable of it. And tonight we're talking uh, Miles Wood, McLeod, Zetterlin. Alexander Holtz is on a fourth line. And this guy, they think, has a lot of skill. And he's 20 years old. And they think he could be a, a pretty good skill player for them for a long time. Great ability uh, for the Devils. But on the fourth line right now for them, which tells you just how scary depth-wise they are uh, up front at the moment. So uh, definitely a good game to sprinkle around with different options for New Jersey uh, in terms of their player props here uh, in this game tonight. All right, next up, we've got Edmonton and Minnesota. Uh, we've got the Minnesota Wild, minus 150 uh, home favorites here at XL Energy Center, six and a half of uh, being the uh, total uh, in this game. Uh, definitely the Oilers in a tricky spot here, scheduling wise, seven and four. They've actually got a good road record. They played honestly better hockey on the road than at home so far this year, but they're coming off a back to back situation, a five, four win against uh, Chicago last night. And I'll tell you what, that was not a comfortable best bet winner for yours truly last night on Edmonton and regulation. I'm thinking they finally put that game away four to one last night and then a couple uh, blunders and it becomes 4-3 they took advantage of a power play Chicago but they got the 5-3 goal and that pretty much put it away Chicago even then got a goal late to make it 5-4 uh, but the Oilers end up 
getting the win 5-4 uh, obviously was more difficult than it had to be, which often happens with uh, Edmonton, to be quite honest with you. A lot of times they make it more difficult than it has to be, but they get the win, their third win in a row. You know, it's still a team that hasn't put 60 minutes together. This time it was the early part of the game that was better for them. I kind of thought they limped to the finish line last night. And then in the Florida and the Rangers games that they won, they had a poor start and then they finished strong in both of those games. So they really didn't heed Connor McDavid's advice. Well, they, they kind of did because he said we had to start better. They did start better last night. They were swarming Chicago in the first period and uh, early in the second period as well, but they didn't finish the game the best. So still looking for 60 minutes, but they did have a better start. They are on a back-to-back situation here now taking on Minnesota who have won three of their last four games uh, was not pretty. And you mentioned that Arizona game, their last game, 4-3 at yeah. home against the Coyotes Sunday afternoon. Can't be impressed with that performance. I mean, just the way they kind of limped to the finish line that day. It was 4-1. Uh, Minnesota and Arizona gets two in the third and makes that a, a, a you know nail-biting finish for Wild fans sitting in the arena there on Sunday afternoon in, in, at the XL Energy Center. But you look at the difference in the scheduling spots here. This is now three full days off from that game against Arizona for Minnesota. You talk about fresh. You talk about a huge rest advantage. Meanwhile, you have Edmonton, and I've talked about this with their schedule. Their schedule has been just awful in terms of what the schedule makers did to them. Look at this run that they've been on. They went in Tampa, in Carolina, in Florida. You're back home for just two lousy games. You're back on the road to the East again. That's unconscionable, by the way. You had this team out there in Tampa, Carolina and Florida, you bring them back home for two games and you send them out to the East again. Yeah, that's crazy. Why didn't you just keep them in the East? Why didn't you do Tampa, Carolina, Florida, New Jersey, Islanders, Rangers, do the tri state trifecta right after that Tampa, Carolina, Florida swatch? Why did you do that if you're the schedule makers? Go from Tampa, Carolina, Florida, send them back home for two home games, the Oilers, and then have them go back out East to play the Devils, Islanders, and Rangers. That's totally absurd. There's no other way around that. Be better. Come on, schedule makers. I mean, come on, be better than that. No team should have to go through something like that. If you're going to make it, make it a long road trip. Put all the East games, put all the West games at the same time. Don't make them have to do a flight out to the East to West or West to East. Come home for one or two home games and make them do the same damn thing after. No, uh, that's to me, that was ridiculous scheduling. But they've got to somehow persevere it. So Tampa, Carolina, Florida on the road. Two home games, then travel, New Jersey, Islanders, Rangers, back home against Florida, back on the road against Chicago, and a second of back-to-back games. I mean, think about how they've gone from New York Saturday afternoon, back home to Edmonton for one lousy game. Now you're traveling to Chicago for Wednesday, and then you're in Minnesota tonight on a back-to-back. So bottom line is this is a huge, huge, huge edge situationally for the Minnesota Wild. They probably get it done. I kind of lean to them here, but in regulation is what I would probably look toward in this game, Minnesota uh, in regulation in this one. What do you think here, Alex? Oilers wild. Yeah, I'm completely off of this game. And, and you know, you already detailed that. I was looking just at kind of the latter part of that scheduling spot. But when you go back further, like I said, this was absolutely brutal. But just even in the short 48-hour, 24-hour aspect of it, the game last night didn't start until 8.52, and that was because of the doubleheader on TNT, and that's awfully late for a central time zone start. Edmonton, I don't have no idea when they got into town. Somewhere around 3, 3.30 a.m. I've been trying to get a confirmation of that all day, uh, but I haven't. They didn't have a morning skate, and like you said, having this much travel any time of the year, that's a lot on a team. You know, I, I was leaning toward Edmonton because I think – Form-wise, they're better. Even with Jack Campbell starting in net, I think this is a good game to give him to give him some confidence uh, in net. Minnesota looked absolutely horrific, like I said, in, in most of uh, of that that game against the Arizona Coyotes. Edmonton kind of did the same thing. It was just in a, in a different fashion. They were dominant uh, in this more in the second period. They were really dominating the play in the first. They should have had a two nothing lead in the first period. They had a goal waved off, which really frustrated me because uh, I had that first period puck line. Really like that spot. Also like the first period over in that spot. Nothing happened. And, you know, I, I, just a lot of frustration with this game last night. I kind of wanted just a little mini rant about, well, one, I didn't get to see the end of the game on TV because of a power outage. So that's just local issues. But the biggest thing was on Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter, and shout out to Tad Bamford, writer for the, for the Blackhawks, who just – Gleefully tweeted, said, Connor McDavid is 25. By age 25, Jonathan Taves already had a Conn Smythe, 
two Stanley Cup rings, a Selkie Trophy, and an Olympic gold medal. And Oilers fans just went absolutely batshit about that tweet. Even after McDavid goes on to score a goal, get an assist, Dreisaitl scores a goal, gets two assists, the Oilers get the win. No, they were more worried about somebody tweeting that somebody else was better than Connor McDavid. And I'm just like, they're the softest fucking fans in the league. Like, I, like, just get over yourselves with this, okay? Like, yes, he's a great player. He's the best player in the league. But everybody just wants to harp him up like he's the next Gretzky. And it's it's not even just Oiler fans. It's it's Connor McDavid fans. They're, they're people who like other teams, but just hold him to such high regard. And it's just like, okay, but facts are facts. This man does not have a Stanley Cup. Yes, he has some MVP trophies. But, you know, yeah, he's done individual work. He hasn't done the collective group work. And as he gets older and older and he sets all these different records, it's not going to mean much of anything if he can't win a championship, if he can't win playoff series and take his team uh, to to a next level. But Oilers fans just get all up in arms if you say anything bad about Connor McDavid. And it just, just really pisses me off. It was just, just super annoying. And uh, it's just, just funny. It was funny seeing some of the comments, too. Just people just, like I said, they couldn't even give a shit that the team won. Uh, and, and not to mention almost blew a lead against a really bad Hawks team on national TV. But nope, nope. Just all, you know, standing guard for number 97 every night. So I had to just get that off of my chest. I was looking at Edmonton here with this plus price because I don't think Minnesota deserves to be laying $1.50. Also, you got to look at serious history. The Wild have owned uh, Edmonton, yeah. they've won six straight six meetings. So, yeah. yeah, so with all that together, this is a stay away game. I'll, I will be watching it on TV. And by the way, it's not actually on TV, it's on ESPN Plus tonight. Uh, but I might look for something in game to play. All right, the good stuff indeed. Um, I'm thinking about the over potentially with Campbell and Net, but I don't know about that. Uh, although I will say this Edmonton here, uh, somehow, some way, their games have gone over here three in a row. It didn't look like it early against Chicago. It still ended up with nine goals. I might end up playing the over with. I got to see, you know, a, gr- a great game from Campbell. There's not been one great game out of Jack Campbell this year. There's been some moments where he's looked okay, but he has not had a 60 minute strong pillar to post dynamite effort in between the pipes yet this year for Edmonton, you know, and I'm going to have to see that before uh, I believe it. So, and, and you're right. I mean, I don't understand what the fuss was with that is with that, you know, just, you know, the Oiler fans slash McDavid fans being upset with that tweet. It's fact. Yeah. It's what we all know is fact. What we know is that first of all, is Connor McDavid the best player on the planet right now? Yes. Is he a much more skilled player? dynamic, talented, you know, is goal score, passer, all that than Jonathan Taves. Of course, yes. nobody's going to debate <laughs> that, of course. But he, the facts are the facts. At this age, 25, Jonathan Taves, who's was not the, as good a player as McDavid in the skill department, of course. He, though, John, Jonathan Taves at 25 has made, had more team accomplishments than Connor McDavid has had at this point. That's the facts. He's won Conn Smythe trophies. He's won Stanley Cups. And the team element of success, to me, matters a lot. And it, to me, it matters even more. Like, I, while I like, love that there's great, talented players out there, if you're unable to lead your team to that last step and win a Stanley Cup or a, even playoff success, like, I'll even give superstar players credit for winning a few playoff series, maybe falling short. Uh, in terms of winning a Stanley Cup, but all, at least winning playoffs. That's what I always thought about Matt Sundin in Toronto all, all those years. Matt Sundin, terrific hockey player. And yeah, unfortunately not able to win the Stanley Cup, but you know he did win several playoff series, more than anything the Leaf fans see these days. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, and he gave him credit for that. Uh, but the fact, and the fact remains, though, when it's a really talented player, you know, you want to see them have that team success, particularly when the going gets tough at playoff time. And that is a simple fact right now that with Taves at 25, McDavid at 25, sure, McDavid's the much more talented, skilled player, but Taves was leading his team to success, to playoff series wins, to Stanley Cup championships at 25. And we have not seen it yet out of Connor McDavid. That's just fact. There's no reason to be butthurt about that I, if you're an Oilers just- fan. I'll say this one last thing. Until Dreisaitl and McDavid reach a Stanley Cup final, I don't want to hear those two names mentioned in the same vein as Taves and, and Kane or even Malkin and, and Crosby. Until that happens, I don't want to hear it from anybody. Yeah. The, the, the skill is great. I mean, they're on par with anybody, if not better than anybody skill-wise. But I'm talking about success-wise, right? Team team accomplishments, championships, winning in, in the postseason, all of that. 
that's got to play a part in it. It has to, you know, you have to factor that in, you know, you know, Gretzky and Messier won Stanley cups. That's why they're an all time great duo. Lemieux and Yager, you know, in those penguins days, they won Stanley cups. They got the job done, you know, absolutely. Uh, and, and you factor that in, you've got to look at it, you know, Sackick and Forsberg, Colorado, you know, all time great duo. Why? They won Stanley Cups. That's why. Won championships. Isn't this what we're playing for here uh, in the NHL? And uh, the same thing with Matthews and Marner. I don't want to hear about Matthews and Marner, all time yep. great duo. Uh-huh. How about win a playoffs? Never, never mind a cup at this rate with those two fucks. How about a playoff series? <laughs> exactly. You know, one playoff series. That would be nice in my lifetime before I'm dead. Well, you know, that would be nice. Um, so to me, you're right. A thousand percent right. Team championships, team success matters. No question about that. Uh, and I think we should, fa- we, we, when we're ranking, and if I'm ranking my top duos, you know, in terms of forwards, that's, that's part of the evaluation process is winning Stanley Cups, winning championships and team success. It has to be. Uh, individual success is nice. Individual ability is nice, but you're right. Having that team success follow it is just as, if not more important. All right. That's a good, that's a good topic there. I love it. Uh, Carolina and St. Louis. We've got uh, Carolina minus 135 road favorites here. Uh, the total in this one total has actually dropped down to five and a half. And I got to take it. I got to bet over five and a half, Alex. I'm finding that these days, these totals at five and a half are going over. You know, you would think these are the games that are going to be low scoring, and that's why they're five and a half. Look at the Islanders and Flyers the other night. Although that one actually did stay under, didn't it? It did. It looked like it was going to go over, but it three did stay one under. though. It was close. It was close though. Yeah. Uh, but there was another one too that you know there've been a couple the last week. They've been five and a half, and you know you'd think it would be the low scoring game, and it ends up flying over the total. But there's been a few of them uh, that have been this way. So I'm going to take over five and a half here. I actually lean a little bit to St. Louis. I'm not ready to lay a buck 30 on the road with uh, Carolina, only a seven and seven road team. You could counter that though and say St. Louis is only five and five at home. St. Louis has kind of gone back in the other direction again after the win streak. Like I said, one of the streakiest teams in the NHL this year, blues have lost three of their last four games. Meanwhile, Carolina's won two in a row after their five game losing streak. So that's why I'm, I, I just think in the price, there's a little value, in my opinion, with the Blues. Uh, you're not getting a, the best number, in my opinion, here with Carolina. But Carolina has won two in a row. And you know what I say about the teams off the losing streak? They put a couple wins together. Maybe it gets them going a little bit. Maybe that's the case for Carolina. Ronta's in net for the uh, Hurricanes, by the way. That is confirmed. And Jordan Binnington uh, in between the pipes tonight for the uh, St. Louis Blues. Uh, Tara Vinen, by the way, is closing in on a return for Carolina. But it's not going to be tonight. Uh, and uh, definitely, you know, that's also played a part in maybe why they haven't been scoring goals in bunches quite as much as we've become accustomed to. So, yeah, I'm going to take over five and a half. And, uh, yeah, I get it. Carolina is eight and one to the under in their last nine games. They have been an under machine. No question about that. But I think most of those games were uh, under uh, six. The, the totals were six or higher. And I'm just looking at Carolina's last uh, 10 to 15 games, Alex, eight and one to the under. Do you know the game that went over? It was a total of five and a half. It was a game against Winnipeg, and the game ended 4-3 in favor of a Winnipeg in that game. So the one five and a half for Carolina with their game totals in the last 10 games went over. So that's my bet here, five and a half over with uh, Hurricanes and Blues. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to look and see if I want to do, like Chris I was talking about, wait live or, or grab this five and a half. Now, one, I do want to get a confirmation of who's going to be in net. Uh, for Carolina, Kachekov, I, I'd much rather have Ronta in uh, with an over because, like I said, Kachekov's just getting better. It is Ronta. It is Ronta. Yeah. It's confirmed. So, yeah. yeah. So, so I definitely, yeah, a buy on five and a half is fine. And, and you know, you're not laying uh, too crazy of a price here. I'm actually seeing dollar tens across the board. So, I'll, yeah, put me down for over five and a half as well. But uh, I wouldn't tell, talk anyone out of waiting and grabbing four and a half because Carolina does play pretty slow to the first period. So, you might be able to get a four and a half hell, a four and a half at a plus price potentially. So uh, I might personally just play a half unit on this five and a half and then sprinkle a little bit more on that four and a half at a plus price. Uh, but I think that should be, they definitely should be able to get six or more over in this spot. Yeah, I think so too. Three of the last four head-to-head meetings with the uh, Hurricanes and the Blues have gone over the total as well, including two straight here in St. Louis uh, in the Midwest. So uh, the last two games between these teams in St. Louis were, uh, six to three and seven to two 
uh, final scores. So definitely over the total. So that's uh, that's where I'm going here, uh, over the total five and a half here with the uh, Blues uh, and the uh, Hurricanes. All right, uh, next up as we continue along here, we've got Anaheim, Dallas. Uh, Dal- uh, Dallas, obviously, as you would expect, a huge, huge favorite here uh, in the uh, minus 300 range. Uh, the total uh, right now, uh, six uh, pretty much across the board in this one. Uh, this is not a game I'm going to do too much in other than maybe some props. This is going to be more of a, a prop game for me. It's certainly uh, a game we would expect the uh, Dallas Stars to be uh, victorious in. Uh, Anaheim just cannot get out of their own way. They're now 6-17 and 17, uh, on the uh, season and 2-11 and 11 on the road. I mean, it's just been tough sledding, and that's uh, putting it mildly for the Anaheim Ducks uh, as of right now. And now John Klingberg, who would have been playing his former team tonight, uh, won't be uh, available for the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, he is going to be out tonight for uh, Anaheim uh, due to a lower body injury. In fact, hasn't even made the trip here, this road trip with the uh, Ducks. So uh, that's a concern. Uh, they've still got Drysdale out on their blue line. And Maxime Comtois is also a big loss the way he was playing. That kid was actually starting to really get it rolling offensively for Anaheim. And now he is out on IR as well. So a lot of issues right now for Anaheim. You know, it's funny because finally this team plays a better defensive game against Nashville. Holding a team to two goals is, is like, you know, a miracle these days for the Anaheim Ducks. They held Nashville to two goals. They still lose the game. Now they can't they couldn't score now in that game. So the one game they actually show up, play well defensively, play better. You know, their penalty kill actually, which has been awful, kills off two Nashville power plays in that game, and they still lose that game two to one uh, in overtime. And yeah, that we were joking. That was the brunt of all the jokes Tuesday night on our live betcast, that Anaheim Nashville game. Storm yeah. fest. Uh, they're still playing and they're still looking to find the back of the net. Uh, and you compare that game to, of course, the, uh, the the insane bonkers shit show that we saw at the end of the night with the uh, Seattle Kraken and the L.A. Kings. It was just a pretty amazing that on the same night you have total polar opposites uh, in terms of uh, end-to-end action in two NHL games on the same night. Dallas should take care of business here, but Dallas has been a little bit more teeter-tottery, I guess, if you will, in, in terms of their performance the last 10 games. They're only a 500 hockey team. You know, the last 10 games. So they've cooled off a little bit. Certainly not going to lay minus 300 or look regulation or puck line aren't even the best value necessarily. They have owned Anaheim. They have won five straight head to head against the Anaheim Ducks. Obviously should win this game, but going to stay out of this and really look more toward uh, player props. By the way, Anthony Stolarz in net for Anaheim tonight. Jake Ottinger confirmed. And Jake Ottinger was battling an illness. So there was some concern whether he'd be available tonight, but he will be. Uh, back in between the pipes tonight for the uh, Dallas Stars, which is good news for them. Uh, but just really from a prop standpoint, there's a couple that do interest me here in this game tonight. Uh, Derek Grant's up on the second line. Maybe you look at that from an Anaheim standpoint. Dallas, definitely. Uh, Radic Foxa moving up to the second line center spot. Uh, ben Johnston and Delandria. It's been a very effective line. Obviously, it goes without saying what you're getting from Jason Robertson. Uh, in particular right now. He's been just magnificent, you know, but again, you're not getting the bargain bin prices with his goal scorer props. I think there is some value in the goal scorer market tonight with Foxa moving up to the second line for the Stars and anybody on that Delandria, Wyatt Johnston, Jamie Ben trio, which has been a very good line for the Dallas Stars since Peter DeBoer put them together. So maybe fact consider some props with those names on that Stars third line. Uh, Alex, what do you think here? Anaheim, Dallas. Yeah, this is going to be a pass for me. This is uh, way too big of a price for Dallas, even in, in regulation. I, I was just looking at a crazy stat that said Dallas has won 35, 36 of the last 53 meetings with the Ducks uh, in Dallas. So that's got to be going back like over, well over 20 years. I think there's a tie involved in that as well. So uh, <laughs> some arbitrary stats that pop up sometimes. But uh, like I said, the Ducks are just in, in poor form right now. Definitely not backing Anthony Stolar is going against Jake Ottinger. That is a, a, a gigantic mismatch in my favor. Although I think Stolar is a decent backup against another team I, at plus 250. I'd be looking to take a shot with the Ducks, even though as bad as they're playing. But Dallas is, is just rolling right now at home. Uh, even the team total is too high, three and a half. You got to lay somewhere around 150, 155. So it's going to be a pass for me. 
be a pass. I failed to mention, too, in the St. Louis Carolina game, Marty Natchez going to definitely take him to score a goal back to back games with a goal. He has been uh, obviously has had a great season overall for the Carolina Hurricanes. Not as much of the bargain bin price with him to find the back of the net tonight, but the, the form he's in. It's still, in my opinion, well worth a look uh, in terms of uh, Marty Natchez here to uh, find the back of the net tonight for the uh, Carolina Hurricanes in that game against St. Louis. All right, Montreal Canadiens, Calgary Flames, all Canadian matchup here. Calgary minus 300, home favorites, six the total, shaded to the over uh, in this game. Uh, Calgary, you know, Montreal, first let's start with them, Montreal, because that was uh, totally a uh, Shocking what happened against San Jose that not only lose to San Jose, but get shut out, get blanked, not even score a goal. Kockinen looks like uh, Patrick Waugh uh, that night against the uh, Montreal Canadiens. Uh, very disheartening loss. But these are the kind of spots where we sometimes see Montreal step up in. And to be honest with you, they've given Calgary problems going back to April of last year. You know, they, they beat Calgary in Calgary two to one, uh, you know, uh, or two years ago, I should say. Then last year, they won at home against Calgary 4-2, and they beat Calgary as a plus 350 underdog, 5-4 in overtime last year. So, you know, this Montreal team has been um, a tough one here for this Calgary team. I might I might dabble in the Canadians here at plus 250 because you got Calgary off the big emotion of the Kachuk night, the Kachuk Bowl against the Florida Panthers. Played a great game, obviously, but... We saw that on the BetCast, and that was one of the games certainly I was watching very intently. Many of us were. That was a great night for Calgary. They played well. They were aggressive. They were really looking to get their offense going. The defensemen were involved in the rush. Many shifts throughout that game. But some of that offensive onslaught wasn't just what Calgary was doing well. It was horseshit defending from the Panthers. It was brutal goaltending from Sergei Bobrovsky. I mean, the bad rebound control in one of the goals that Calgary got in the first period was just deplorable. Uh, flopping around like a fish in the crease. Like I said, a drunk man on skates, you know, rump, stumbling in the crease, falling down, ass backwards. And one of the Calgary goals in that third period, just ugly stuff. So while Calgary played a good game, you know, it's a situation where, yeah, Florida was equally horrendous defensively. And that's been an issue, of course, for Florida of late. That win did snap that mini little three-game slide for Calgary. And the one constant here with Montreal is, you know, when they've faced, you know, it, it feels like the better the opponent, you know, the tougher and out they are. Uh, and that's been kind of a repeated thing here for the uh, Montreal Canadiens uh, in recent games. So this might be one where I, uh, and Chris Otto alludes to it here, you know, that team total only being two and a half and plus, you know, around even money uh, in some spots. I think I might split it up between the small shot and the money line with the Canadians in the plus 250 range and split it up with half on that and half on the team total for the Montreal Canadiens at plus 112 for over two and a half on the Montreal Canadiens team total at Pinnacle. Plus 112, plus, plus money on a two and a half. I mean, we're not asking them much. And the one thing we'll say about Calgary, you know, is that uh, up and down they can sometimes be in terms of what they give up uh, to the opposing team. They did give up three to Washington and Calgary before holding Florida to two. So it just feels like coming off the big, much hyped, much anticipated return of Matthew Kachuk to Calgary the other night. It's not exactly a bet on spot here for Calgary, you know, even though on paper they're the superior team. Jake Allen and net for the uh, Montreal Canadiens, Jacob Markstrom. Uh, it will be once again for the uh, Calgary Flames. Uh, you could also bet the full game over. It's only six. Markstrom's been good at times, not so good at times. And Jake Allen's actually really struggled, you know, at times for the yeah. uh, Montreal Canadians. And you look at his numbers lately, Alex, three goals to San Jose because the fourth was an empty netter, seven to Buffalo, four to Philly, four to New Jersey, four to Pittsburgh. It's been a bad stretch for Jake Allen. So full game over might get there as well. So this might be a, you know, spread it across, spread the wealth, if you will, for me in this game. Habs team total over two and a half plus 112 little money line on the Habs a little over six minus 120 as well uh, Alex uh, what do you think here Habs and Flames yeah I like this over but I'm gonna wait for the end game for first period I'm gonna wait to get I mean it's one and a half right now I want to get a plus price for that one and a half I want to get five and a half for the over here and I get what you're saying with with the Habs it's definitely worth taking a shot plus 250 that's a, a tad steep 
Uh, but Calgary has really rolled at home five of the last eight home games. They've gone over in the first period. Like I said, if they can trade back and forth, Allen hasn't been that strong. Uh, and you have to keep in mind, too, you know, I said it was Montreal's the bad defensive play that kind of uh, shined and what gave San Jose those four goals. If, if they were playing a different team, they probably would have got ran out 7 nothing, 8 nothing. A team like Calgary, we know they could put the pressure on early. I think this is going to be a, a good back and forth game, but uh, I think Montreal can at least kind of trade punches and maybe hang on. Maybe this one's kind of closer. So I, w- I wouldn't, you know, talk anyone out of a shot at 250, but I definitely like the overs a bit more. But I say wait in game, get a plus price at one and a half, get a five and a half at a, a, a cheaper price or hopefully a plus price as well. Good prop game, too. And uh, that's where I'm going to go next is with the uh, props here in this game. Caulfield, Suzuki, Doc, Anderson, good options, I think, from a Montreal standpoint. And you know what I'm going to bet for Calgary? And it's not a really uh, – Jonathan Huberto, yes, because I think that game against Florida, fine in the back of the net against his old team, that's going to get him going. Uh, but I'm going to look at the two guys, that the, the two players that Calgary's really counted upon this year to take that step offensively. And they have not been – getting it done much of the year but finally on Tuesday night against the Panthers they both found the back of the net and maybe that's the spark to get them going offensively for good and that's Dylan Dubé and that's Andrew Mangiapane uh, for the Calgary Flames I'm going to be betting both of them to score a goal tonight uh, in this game I like that situation a lot where you've got guys that were counted upon to step up in the absence of obviously Kachuk going to Florida Gaudreau going to Columbus that you needed, you know, Dubé to have a good season. You needed Mangiapane to show last year was not a fluke. And so far, it looks like it kind of was, but doesn't mean he can't get it back on track. And certainly, that was probably the weight of the world off his shoulders a little bit. Finally scoring against Florida the other night maybe gets him going a little bit. So I like that angle there where guys that were expected to produce offensively kind of struggling early in the year, but they finally see the puck go in for them Tuesday night. And now maybe they carry that forward into good things tonight and moving forward uh, for them. If you really want to go down the well on the bargain bin, Rzichka is still having chances. He gets a lot of opportunities still, even though he's been dropped to the third line. Blake Coleman is someone, too, that keeps getting chances. I think the puck's going to go in again for one of those two guys. So Rzichka and Coleman, both playing on the third line tonight for Calgary, might also be uh, worthy of of a consideration here in terms of uh, goal scoring props in this game tonight. All right, next up, we've got three games left on the uh, radar here. We've got the uh, Washington Capitals taking on the Seattle Kraken. Uh, Seattle minus 125, uh, home favorites here at Climate Pledge. And the total right now in this game, six pretty much across the board, even money. So we're going to talk about this as well with the Kings in just a bit. What kind of style of play do we get from the Kraken? What do we get from the Kings after that crazy 9-8 to eight game, 17 goals the other night? Do we see them just say, oh, we, we can't have that happen again? Tighten it up, be good defensively, really try to find that our play in our own zone, get it back to where it needs to be, because clearly it wasn't where anyone wants it to be, uh, wanted it to be the other night in that Seattle uh, and L.A. game. So we're going to see if uh, Seattle... Uh, can uh, tighten things up tonight. Will they tighten things up? That's the uh, question here uh, in this game. Washington, give them credit. Um, You know, they've been up and down. They've been an injury-riddled mess. They've not necessarily played well. Probably one of their best games of the year, fair to say, against Vancouver the other night, 5-1. Very impressive performance. We did say that that was a spot, though, for Vancouver where, you know, we were a little bit concerned about home team, returning off a long, successful, perfect road trip, beating some really good teams as well, like Vegas and Colorado, and maybe Vancouver just couldn't answer the bell and keep it going, uh, and that was exactly the case. You could tell right away, you know, Vancouver's not got it tonight uh, because Washington jumped on them early. A couple of Ovechkin goals uh, gave them the early lead, and then they paced themselves to a 5-1 win from there. Uh, I'm going to take Seattle again, Alex, even though they're just kind of the same spot, right? They're rolling. They had a great road trip. They're off this wild fire wagon hockey, crazy game. If there's ever a, a spot that could be flat, it could be tonight for the Kraken. Great road trip. One, ended it with that just insane victory in overtime against L.A., 9-8 to eight the other night. I am worried this is Washington-Vancouver part two. I will admit that this is just a bad spot for the home team coming back from the road just like it was for Vancouver and Washington, much like the other night, they take advantage of it. But Seattle's a team we've cashed tickets with three, 
or times in a row now. You know, we've been made some money with this team. We're riding this great streak they're on. I don't want to jump off the streak. This is another spot, too, where if I'm not riding Seattle like I've been the last few games, I'm maybe not betting Seattle tonight. But because I've cashed a few times in a row with Seattle, I feel more interested to just to take another shot with them tonight. In spite of the fact I do have concerns about this spot for the home favorites. So Kraken minus 125 for me in this one, even with some reservations included. Uh, not dinner reservations, mental reservations in terms of, I, I don't know if this is a great spot for Seattle, but I've been riding them and I'm going to keep riding them at least one more time till this losing streak of theirs ends. Uh, what do you think here, Alex Washington, Seattle? Yeah, I'm right there with you. And I've actually seen this number drop. It's not available minus 115 at bet online. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that I had it circled and, and gave it out, but I actually waited a little bit because I thought it could drop. Uh, we saw some money coming in on Washington a little bit, when I did, uh, I did a show earlier this morning. So 115, I was able to grab that before we got on air here. Uh, and like I said, I think with that 9A game, like I said, we can't, we as handicappers have to look at it the same way the players are going to look at it. They're going to throw that out the window. You know, it was a crazy game. It happened. It's on record. But, you know, Martin Jones, I'm sure he's not sitting in the practice, you know, crease thinking about the eight goals he gave up. You know, he's got he's to throw that out of his mind. He's been playing well before that, that time. He needs a, a better, you know, uh, a head frame going into this contest if he starts. And if, if it's not him, it's Grubauer. I think Grubauer is going against his old team, which I'm sure will get him jazzed up as well. And this is the Washington Capitals. It's not the LA Kings. This, this is not going to be a boat race. They're not going to to, to match anybody, uh, you know, in speed right now, especially Seattle with the way that their offense is clicking. So uh, I think this is a great spot here for the crack, and I think this is a good price. Uh, and like I said, if you didn't, hopefully you waited and, and went for this price to drop in this dollar twenty dollar fifteen range. I think that's a good striking point for it. I agree. I mean, it's just a cheap price. They find they find ways to win hockey games. They're doing that. This is not the best spot in the world. I totally agree with that. If you're a spot handicapper, situational handicapper, I know you're on Washington. If you're one of those handicappers, that's strictly a situational handicapper. There's no doubt you're on Washington tonight. But I can't do it. I, I just think Seattle's the better team. They've shown to be the better team early in the year. Washington's still got a shit ton of injuries. Let's not forget that. There's still no Backstrom, Haglin, Orlov, the best defenseman still out, best defensive defenseman, Tom Wilson. Starting to get a little healthier. but And Philip Grubauer, I actually think it's good that he's in net because the Martin Jones thing has come to an end. You know, Martin Jones is re you know regressing back to Martin Jones typically is. You know, the last few starts, he's been uh, lit up a little bit. So uh, Grubauer, in that, and let's not forget, Grubauer was pretty solid the last time we saw him against Vegas. Played well in that win against the Golden Knights, 4-2. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think a point to prove now with Martin Jones getting all these starts, here's an opportunity for Grubauer. Step up if you're Phillip. Here's your chance. He plays well tonight. He's got his net back. There's no question about that because Martin Jones has leveled off the last three games. So here's a chance here for Philip Grubauer uh, to get the uh, net back for the uh, uh, Seattle Kraken in this game. As far as the props go uh, for Seattle, more Washington, I consider Sheary and Milano. I've talked about them a bunch. Seattle, Wenberg. I'm going back to the well with Wenberg. Wenberg continues to roll two goals and back to, uh, goals and back to back games. You can get plus 450 in some spots for him to score a goal. And he's your top line center and he scored in back to back games. I'm seeing plus four fifty in some spots for him to score a goal. That's insane. And I was beside myself. I was livid. Couldn't believe it. I didn't get that bet in the other night against LA when he found the uh, back of the net. Alex Wenberg, who's a talented kid, has just been waiting for him to really get it going since he was drafted in Columbus. But you know, you can get plus four fifty in some spots for him to score a goal. It's insanity uh for a guy that's centering a top line and has got goals in uh, back to back games. Uh, you know, you could go with Burakovsky uh, because he played with Washington, if you'll remember, way back when, playing his old team. You could go with Beniers, of course, who's always a decent option uh, for them. And yes, Daniel Sprong is a good option. You're right, former capital. And even he, down the lineup, and he's not, you know, playing up the lineup by any stretch. He's only on the fourth line. Sometimes you don't need a ton of minutes to produce. He's got goals in back-to-back -back games, despite only being on the fourth line. In fact, he's got two points in each of the last two games. Four points in the last two games combined against the Ducks and the Kings for Daniel Sprong. So no question about that, even though he's only getting fourth-line minutes, and that's not normally the spot where I'm loving taking a goal prop with you. He's been producing, and he's also plus 450 to plus 500. Uh, to score a goal tonight for the Seattle Kraken. So it's a very good bargain bin-laden game in terms of the goal score prop market. 
here with the uh, Kraken and the uh, Capitals tonight. All right, uh, next up, we've got Florida and Vancouver. Uh, the Panthers, uh, minus 135 road favorites here uh, in Van City. Uh, the total, six and a half across the board. Uh, I definitely like this game to go over the total. Uh, it, uh, when you look at these two teams, neither one is one you trust defensively. One game to the next, that's concerning. Florida especially, what on earth has happened? to the Florida Panthers, their defensive structure has just, you know, come apart completely uh, at the seams. Uh, they gave up six to Calgary Tuesday night. They gave up four to the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, they gave up five to St. Louis and that collapse on Saturday, uh, this past weekend, uh, you know, five to Columbus, five to Calgary, six to Dallas. I mean, it's been, it's been a bad stretch defensively for the Florida Panthers. It hasn't helped that their goaltending has been poor, but Brovsky was awful the other night. And even Spencer Knight hasn't been nearly as sharp the last few games uh, in between the pipes for the uh, uh, Florida Panthers either. Uh, we'll see if he bounces back here. Uh, Spencer Knight projected, not confirmed yet, though, uh, to be the goalie. I do expect it will be him, though. Uh, Alexander Barkov, a uh, day-to-day still with that illness, and that plays a part in the defensive woes as well. You know, this team without Alex Barkov, and everyone talks about how he's one of the best two-way centers in the NHL. I agree with that. He's excellent defensively. He gives you a lot offensively. He's even more valuable to a team defensively. They have given up 15 goals in three games without Alexander Barkov. So if you don't think he matters defensively to the Florida Panthers, you need your head examined. He absolutely does. He is a terrific two-way center, and they have not been uh, very good in terms of shutting down the opponent in three games since he's been out with this uh, absence. 15 goals surrendered in just three games uh, with uh, Alexander Barkov sidelined. Uh, so that's not good if you're Florida. Like I say, I expect Spencer Knight uh, to be in net for them. It is confirmed Thatcher Demko uh, for the uh, Vancouver Canucks, who has had a, obviously a rough season. You know, he's one of the worst five goalies and goals saved above average on the season. Uh, that being said, he's been, I guess, marginally better a couple of the starts lately. He had the win against L.A., he had the uh, win against San Jose uh, in his last start where he gave up three goals, but he was pretty good in that game, honestly, even though he gave up three goals. It was one of his better uh, performances in net, but man, we've still got to see more of it from a consistency standpoint from um, Thatcher Demko moving forward. And we know the Canucks team defensively has just had a rough season as well. They've been better actually the last few, but they came, went back to the, uh, the issues they had early in the season and the Washington loss, just bad puck management. A lot of the time was resulting in a lot of their goals, people uh, forwards not getting back in time, defensemen out of position, you know, kind of the same things we've seen pretty much all season from Vancouver. So I lean Canucks from a side perspective, but I don't know if I'll pull the trigger on that. I am absolutely pulling the trigger on the over. I do think we'll see goals both ways here uh, in this one. Alex, uh, what do you think? Florida, Vancouver. Yeah, I agree. And I got the over uh, first period over two plus a dollar fifteen with this one. I think we see goals like I said, both ways. Florida, and I wonder, you know, you talked about this at the beginning of the year with Paul Maurice coming in, the style change that that we've seen happen. They're not playing that that fire wagon offensive style of hockey. Do you think that they're having a an issue that we've seen with a lot of defensive minded coaches where the teams get so worried about playing on their back line that they get watered down, bogged down, and now they're not doing the defensive part right either. They're just kind of just, you know, lost in, 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 in transition, essentially, uh, you know, not finding an identity. I think that's what's happened with Florida right now. So definitely can't look at them at, at a favorite uh, right now against anybody. Uh, to be honest, like I said, even, you know, with Vancouver, you know, they've been kind of up and down. I don't like them as, as a side, but I think we see a lot of goals here. I love that first period over two plus dollar for two nine. I would certainly only take Vancouver as a home dog as well. I would not lay a price with Florida in that uh, sieve uh, like defensive play of late on the road, but I definitely prefer the total uh, in this one. No question uh, about that. So uh, interesting to see how that plays out. Chris Otto brings up a good point in our chat. And he, of course, he was with us on the BetCast Tuesday night. Maybe you just live bet whoever falls behind in this game. Both teams have had issues holding leads all season, especially of late. Uh, so that is definitely something to uh, factor into the uh, live betting equation tonight for this particular game. Prop-wise, not a bad, like I say, Kuzmenko and Mikheyev are the go-to props for me with Vancouver right now. Horvat goes without saying with what he's done offensively, but you get a little more bargain with Mikheyev and Kuzmenko. 
maybe Nils Hoaglander can get going because he's a guy that was counted upon for some offense, was in a drought, scored the other night, though, against Washington, was the only guy that scored for Vancouver. Does he get going a little bit? I mean, this is a guy with some good offensive capability. Uh, so we'll have to uh, end up seeing if uh, they are able uh, to uh, maybe uh, get if Nils Hoaglander is able, able to get going a little bit here for Vancouver. So I wouldn't mind taking a shot with him to find the back of the net for the Canucks tonight either. All right, final game of this massive Thursday card, Arizona Coyotes, Los Angeles Kings. We've got the Kings minus 240, home favorites, six the total uh, in this one. It's basically the same, you know, thought process as Seattle. What do you get from L.A.? A team that was actually on the losing end of that crazy, insane 9-8 to eight, uh, game the other night against the Seattle Kraken. Look, there's just a bunch of issues right now for the L.A. Kings uh, during this uh, stretch of play where they've gone 1-5 and five, uh, in their last six games. A lot of it's been failure to keep the puck out of the net. Again, just like we talked about with Florida and Vancouver, L.A.'s defensive play, where's it gone? I remember taking a shot with L.A. as a dog in Edmonton, TNT game, November the 16th. They beat Edmonton 3-1. I've not seen a team do a defensive clinic on McDavid and Dreisaitl in a game this season like L.A. did. Yep. They haven't stopped anybody since then. That's the, Isn't that the damnedest thing? And they put together a Picasso, a Rembrandt of, of defensive play against two of the best players in the NHL, two of the most dynamic players forwards in the NHL right now, Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. The way they completely walled those two players off and kept them from getting anywhere in the middle of the ice, especially in the offensive zone, kept them to the outside that entire game. Where, Why couldn't L.A. bottle that up? I mean, it's just they have not come close to anything like that defensively since that game against Edmonton. They lose to Vancouver. They give up four. They blow a lead against Seattle, lose in overtime. They give up five to the Rangers. You know, they give up uh, three to Ottawa in overtime. They give up the nine spot to Seattle. You know, the one win was against San Jose 5-2. And even in that game, they got outshot and outchanced. So, you know, it's really a tough situation right here for the uh, LA Kings. And not a team I'm really excited about laying minus 240 with right now with the uh, form that they're in at this point in time. Arizona, though, we've talked about this. They're fighting the good fight. It's been, you know, a ridiculously long time on the road for this team. I mean, this is just insane while they wait for the dressing room construction to finish at Mullet Arena, uh, that they just put this team in a spot where uh, they are uh, just absolutely having to play uh, this almost a month on the road, essentially. And it's not even close to done yet. You know, they've already feels like they've been on the road for since the, really since the beginning of November, almost a full month, and they've still got, you know, on their schedule, L.A. tonight, and then the Western Canadian trio, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, before they finally see Arizona for a home game again, which will be a week from tomorrow, uh, next Friday, December 9th, when they finally get back home. So they look a little bit, Alex, like they're running on fumes, Arizona, just a little bit. With all this travel, with all this time that they've been on the road, you know, and I'm not sure I'm ready to trust them here either. Uh, in this game. So it's going to be a pass for me all around from a side perspective and from a total perspective. There are a couple props that interest me. Uh, on the LA side, I've talked about Kaliev's undervalued right now. Velarde comes back from injury uh, the last game against Seattle, and he contributes right away uh, offensively. Uh, there are definitely a couple of uh, prop looks there. Even Grunstrom may be a little undervalued. And for Arizona, I'd probably look at Kraus, and I'd probably look at Nick Schmaltz, especially Nick Schmaltz. I mean, this is a guy that really started to come alive for them second half of last season. He just returned from injury uh, four games ago, uh, and in four games since he's returned, he's got three goals. So Nick Schmaltz uh, for the Arizona Coyotes is probably definitely uh, a good player prop, goal scorer consideration tonight on the Coyotes' side. Uh, what do you think here, Alex? Arizona, L.A.? Yeah, L.A., like I said, they've been in, in pretty bad form. And, and with Arizona, like I said, keep in mind with this long road trip, they were home the last few days because they had days off. And it's the first time they've actually oh, just been true. back Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're home. right. The Minnesota you know. game, Sunday. Yep, good right. point. Right, so they've, they've had a couple of days to at least go home to Arizona and now hit, hit back on the road. So from a reset point, this might be the freshest we've seen them in weeks. That still doesn't mean that, you know, they're going to just be – uh, all of a sudden just completely energized and ready to roll. So if you like Arizona, I'd say maybe look for something first period and then adjust in game. 
Uh, the one thing I was looking at, I was actually thinking about taking a shot with the third period over two and a half. You can find this adjusted at BetMGM plus 135. Uh, nine of the last 11 games with Arizona, we've seen the third period over cash. And you give yourself some plus money by going all over with that two and a half. I think, uh, especially when we saw the pace of, of L.A., if they do get back and and, and kind of, you know, uh, like I said, they should wash the taste out of the mouth of that of that game going back and forth with Seattle. Get back to being the, the, a good team that they know they can be. They might be able to put the screws to Arizona, and we see them run away and you know get some goals late. But if Arizona can hang on, this might be a battle back and forth. So I do think we see goals later in this game, if at all. So it's a, more of a lean. It's not going to be an official play for me, but that's the kind of angle I'm attacking. If you like Arizona, look for something early. If you like the Kings, wait for something in game to pop up. You know, it's funny, Chris Otto with the totals charts, of course, first period. We talk first period a lot, but there's also, and you mentioned third period over in this game because of Arizona kind of trending that way. I kind of noticed, too, I think San Jose's been a big third period over team lately, too, based on those uh, charts that I saw. So that's something to keep. I think there were two goals both by Toronto last night uh, in the third period in that game with San Jose. But keep an eye on that, too, San Jose games uh, with the third period over. Uh, they might also be a worth a look, but uh, that is a good thing to point out. Third period overs. Uh, again, though, a lot of these games, you're not getting the one and a halfs at value anymore in the intermission. Uh, you got to either bet them pregame or just wait till the third period starts and get a better number, you know, as the third period progresses. Because a lot of the times you're going to have to settle for two, two and a half with a third period total these days. So uh, definitely keep in mind, it's all about when to bet it see if you can get the uh, best number and price available but uh yeah more of a prop game here for me with coyotes kings to uh wrap up the night all right that is the thursday card thanks to everyone for uh, tuning in as always hit the like button uh, if you're watching on youtube and a reminder check out patreon.com slash ice guys uh, just ten dollars a month uh patreon our daily ice guys show betting card at my plays alex's plays are posted there uh goalie charts totals charts Plenty of bonus content and more. Patreon.com slash Ice Guys, just $10 a month. And also the uh, Ice Guys store, Alex. Uh, time's, time's running out. Christmas is almost here, right? Yeah, exactly. You got five days left to get 15% off everything in the stores. You can grab one of these shirts. Uh, we got a bunch of uh, hoodies. We got caps. We've got hats. We've got mugs. Uh, you also get free standard shipping for the next five days. So 15% off and free shipping. No promo code needed. Just click at the top of the screen. Go to iceguys.myspreadshop.com and uh, get that now. Like I said, you want to get it in before the holidays. You don't want to be uh, shut out on Christmas Day. There we go. All right. Uh, make sure you take advantage of that. Only five days left for that. And as Chris Otto points out in the cha chat, it is worth pointing this out. Florida Panthers, 15 straight third period overs. Something to consider. 15 straight third period overs. So keep that in mind for their game against Vancouver, especially if it starts off slower than expected in the goals uh, category yeah. in the first two periods. So uh, definitely something to uh, file away. Uh, in the uh, back of your mind uh, for Panthers Canucks tonight. All right. Hopefully you can file away uh, our best bets for this Thursday night as well. Uh, Alex, uh, what do you like for best bet? Well, you know what? We're going to go right with that game. We're going to go Florida, Vancouver, uh, first period over two plus a dollar 15. Uh, and, and based on that information, you might want to look at taking the full game over as well. But uh, I think this definitely will be a spot where we see some back and forth action early uh, in, in the contest. Florida's goaltending has just been shoddy. Their defense, uh, the same same boat. And I think Vancouver will be able to kind of, uh, you know, get to have a better start in this game than, they, than we saw uh, in, in that game against Washington. So Canucks, Panthers, first period over two, plus $1.15. That's my best bet for this Thursday. All right, there we go. Uh, like in the uh, over in the first period, Florida, Vancouver, best bet for Alex B. Smith. And my best bet is this tells you I care about winners. I care about profits. People know growing up I rooted for the Buffalo Sabres. You know that. Uh, I cheered for them. Rick Jenneret is what made me a Sabres fan. The best damn announcer I thought at the time is the fun funniest damn thing ever listening to him call a game. Uh, and that made me a Sabres fan. I will not be a Sabres fan, at least in terms of my wallet tonight. Uh, I like Colorado in regulation, uh, minus 112 at Pinnacle uh, against the Buffalo Sabres. Very simple handicap. Rest advantage off a rare, and I mean rare, shutout loss for the defending Stanley Cup champions. And I like that Jared Bednar is going right back to Alexander Georgiev uh, in net after allowing the five goals against Winnipeg. Chance for him to get back in the saddle and back in the win column. Buffalo rolls in off a back-to-back -back after a 
Very exhausting shootout win against Detroit uh, last night. Uh, very, very good spot here for Colorado, who's still the superior team. Uh, I think they can take advantage of it here. Abs in regulation, minus 112 uh, for my best bet here for this Thursday card. And that'll wrap up this edition uh, of the Ice Guys. Thanks to everyone in the chat for joining us. Hit the like button uh, on the way out. We appreciate it. A reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. If you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. For Alex B. Smith, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Thursday night. Enjoy the games and good luck. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Friday with, I believe, our Friday guest, Jimmy Murphy, uh, joining us tomorrow uh, on the show to break down the Friday card and look back on Thursday. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of the Ice Guys presented by National Hockey Now. Thank <sighs> you.